So we're on to chapter three. We're talking about polynomials and complex numbers. A lot of this will look like algebra two review, I hope. Um, but if not, that's what these notes are for. So especially in 3.1, when we're talking about solving quadratic equations and inequalities, um, remember with quadratics, I'm looking at things that are in this form, right? With my highest power, my degree being two, this is what makes it quadratic. And the first trick I have up my sleeve to solve these equations is to factor. Well, this was a major algebra two skill. If anything, this is the major skill in algebra two, right? Our process uh, by which I can turn a quadratic um, trinomial into two binomials and the product of those two binomials. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on that right now. Let's go into something that maybe needs a little more attention, and that's completing the square, which was an Algebra 2 topic as well, but often needs a little more attention because the process can be complicated sometimes. Completing the square is going to look and feel a little bit like vertex form, like when we try to turn something from standard form into vertex form, but don't get too attached to that idea. Um, because we're solving, that we're going to do some things that I would never let you do if you were just to transform something into vertex form. Um, but I need to do that here because I'm solving, so I should eliminate as much extraneous stuff as I can. So let's take a look at this problem here. And the first thing I want to do is make sure my leading coefficient is equal to 1. And this is going to make my process a lot simpler. So in order to do that, I can just divide through by 2. So my first step is just going to be to kind of scale this back a little bit. And this is that first step where I would never let you do this transforming it into vertex form, right? If I were to go into vertex form, I would need to preserve that too. Well, I don't need to do that here because I'm trying to solve anyway. So let's just divide through. My next step is going to be to move the constant to the right hand side. So I'm just going to subtract that. And now here comes the big step. Here comes the most important step, which is my goal is to turn this side over here into a perfect square trinomial, right? That's something that's in this a plus or minus b squared equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared form. So in order to do that, I'm going to add half of b squared to both sides, to both sides in order to keep things equivalent. So, well, here is my b, my b, and we're just going to look at the sign itself here. It doesn't really matter if we're taking the sign or not because we're going to square it. So we're just going to look at the number itself here, 2. Um, I just realized I misspoke a little bit earlier. We're taking the coefficient, not necessarily just the sign. So I want half of that, half of two is one, and one squared is one. So I'm gonna add one to both sides, right? Just because whatever I do over here, I need to also do over here. So that step is really the big important step in completing the square. Well, what this does for us, fortunately, is it turns my left-hand side into a perfect square trinomial. So my next step is just going to be to acknowledge that fact. It's going to be x minus 1 squared equals negative 5 halves over here. So we now have a perfect square. I guess I'll move this, we'll just get rid of this. On the left-hand side, and I can acknowledge that fact, and it'll always be x, whatever the sign was, 1 half b. Every time. So now I'm looking at this equation that I actually can solve. So I realize I picked kind of a not a great problem here because I'm going to take the square root and I'm going to run into 
a square root that I can't get real solutions out of. <laughs> um, maybe I should have looked at this before I uh, recorded it, huh? That's okay. For the sake of the problem, we're just going to finish the process. Um, but this is going to tell us that clearly we have no real solutions. Uh, we'll talk about why this is a little bit later in the video. But if I'm just going to go through and solve it, I'm just going to add one on both sides. We'll talk about complex numbers a little bit later in the chapter. Um, but here would be our final answer. And like I said, for the sake of solving this, for the sake of walking through the process, it's really not the end of the world that I have an imaginary solution. Um, I may be just kicking myself because I would have liked this to work out a little bit nicer than it actually did. But hey, it's okay. So here's that's really our process. And what we can do with completing the square is actually use it to derive the quadratic formula, which is our friend over here. Um, and maybe that's something I'll have you actually do as an investigation in class. But here's our quadratic formula. It is our friend. Don't be afraid of it. Um, it can be really helpful, especially when completing the square gets messy. Um, I trust you guys to know how to plug into a formula, so I'm not going to teach you how to do it in this video. Again, let's jump to something a little more interesting. Um, over here, I kind of said I wish I had checked this problem out to see if it had real solutions or not. And there's a way to do that without doing out the problem in full. And that's by considering what we call our discriminant. And the discriminant, our book gives the Greek letter delta, which just looks like a triangle. And the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. It's just all the stuff that's underneath the square root in my quadratic formula. And that can be really helpful to determine what we call the nature of the roots. Nature of roots without solving. It's going to tell us the number of real solutions. So let's kind of take a look here. I have three ways my discriminant can turn out. My discriminant can be either greater than zero, so positive, less than zero, so negative, or exactly equal to zero. Well, let's think about this. Let's use our quadratic formula and think about this. If my discriminant is positive, so I've got a positive number here under the square root, well, then I can get two distinct answers, right? I can get negative b plus the square root of the discriminant, and negative b minus the square root of the discriminant. So this is going to give me two real solutions, two distinct real solutions. I'm just going to say that they are distinct or unique solutions. Let's consider kind of the opposite case, which is if my discriminant was negative. And if my discriminant was negative, well, then I'm trying to take the square root of a negative number, and that's not going to give me a real answer, as we saw up here. So this is going to give me no real solutions. And it's actually going to give me two complex or imaginary solutions. And we'll talk about what that looks like in the next section. Last but not least, if my discriminant is equal to zero, well, then this whole term effectively cancels out, right, because I have square root of 0, which is 0. And I'm just left with opposite of b over 2a, which is going to give me one, what we call a repeated real solution, or root. It's repeated. So solution, you're also, again, going to hear the word root instead, or zero, all of these all mean the same thing. So without solving, determine the nature of the roots of this equation right here. Well, without solving means just jump right to the discriminant. Let's just take a quick look at b squared minus 4ac. So b squared is 49. 4 times a times c is going to give me positive 69, which is a positive number. And that tells me I'm going to have two real solutions. And this is going to be useful because it'll let me kind of sketch my graph somewhat. Um, if I know there are two real solutions, 
I know that somewhere on the graph, and this is not exactly where it's going to fall, but somewhere on the graph, I'm going to cross the x-axis twice, and it will tell me that I do that, and it'll help me maybe check my work if I ever ask you to sketch something. It can also be particularly useful later on when we're trying to actually divide through and calculate some things, um, solve bigger equations, um, whether to know how to finish it. It's, I'll talk about it later. I don't want to go off on a tangent right now. Um, but those are kind of the tricks we have up our sleeves for solving, right? We've got factoring, we've got completing the square, we've got the quadratic formula, and now we've got all this business here with the discriminant.